morning, everybody, wherever you are. My name's Kevin Turvey, but you can call me Kevin Turvey. <laughs> All right, settle down, settle down. I thought we'd start like with a little joke, right? Because this week I've been investigating death. Death. The grim rapist. <laughs> what is he? Where is he? Why is he? You could even say, is he? You could say, anything? Like, a lot of people say anything. I mean, like, the other day, right, I went round to see Theresa Kelly. who's like this girl that I know. Well, not like her. I mean, she is her, you know. <laughs> I suppose she is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a bit of trouble after you, wasn't it? So I decided to go and see her on the bus, right? Decided not to go in a car, like, because then I'd have to get, like, loads of money together and, uh, book up a load of lessons and buy a car. It's just too much trouble. <laughs> so I went straight down to the bus stop, right, and started to wait. And just as I was, as I'd almost finished waiting, right, this bus started to come up the hill. I thought, great, I hope that this is a 64, like. I really hope it's a 64. And sure enough, it was. I thought, great. Well, it's bound to be a 64, really. Because only the 64's come up there. <laughs> but I stuck my hand out to stop it. And it went straight past. Straight past. I thought... <coughs> well, I can't actually say what I thought, you know, because like, there's this rule at the BBC that says that you can't actually talk properly, you know. You have to pretend to talk the way that people who invented TV 50 years ago used to talk, right, when they were at dinner parties pretending not to swear. It's a very good rule. I don't quite know why they have it. I think it's probably to save money or something like that. Anyway, it's a very good rule. But it wasn't too bad, you see, when the bus went past, and I thought this word, because another bus started coming up the hill. Another 64, right? Not the same one, you know, because that had gone away. <laughs> the same one, right? If he turned left down Latimer Crescent, right, he told all his passengers, everybody, get off now, get off the bus very fast. And then he'd whiz round the block, right, with an empty bus. Then it could have been the same one. But, like, they don't do that, do they? But if they do, I haven't noticed, anyway. Don't so anyway, I got on this bus and I went upstairs because I wanted to look out the window, you know. And uh, they've got loads of windows up there, so it's a good place. <laughs> so I sat up there, sitting there for about, I don't know, five minutes, I suppose, looking at things, trees, houses. And the bus conductor came up. I said, 12, please. And he says, what do you got against the Irish? I said, he got nothing against the Irish. And he says, oh, ha, ha, very funny. Look at him sitting there covered in sick. And everybody started laughing at me. And I wasn't covered in sick at all. It's a new anorak. <laughs> so I don't know what they were laughing at. I think they're probably laughing at what they thought I might have looked like if I was covered in sick. <laughs> but anyway, I just ignored it for the rest of the journey. But anyway, all that about the bus isn't important, right? I got round to Teresa's house. Right? I decided not to knock on the door, you know, because they got this bell, right? I thought I'll use that. So, <laughs> got my finger out and pressed the bell. And almost immediately, there was a pause of about a minute, a minute, ten seconds, and Mrs. Kelly came to the door. I opened it up. She says, "All right, Kevin." I says, "All right," because I, I was, you know. <laughs> I said, I don't think she says, all right. I says, is Teresa in? And she says, aha, well, that's where you're in for a bit of trouble, isn't it, Kevin? Because she's out walking the dog. <laughs> and I know that their dog died in 1977. <laughs> I know that, because he's buried under my onions. <laughs> Not like the onions in my kitchen, right? The ones I grow in my garden. <laughs> well, I don't grow them, you know. They grow themselves. <laughs> God grows them. <laughs> anyway, that's a different question, isn't it? So how could she possibly have been walking the dog? Unless it's had puppies. And I could it? I would have noticed that the onions had been disturbed. <laughs> so basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you go around to a girl's house, right, and she's not in, then don't count on her being in love with you. All right. Till next week, I'm Chair Britain. Don't forget, if there's anything you want investigating, Kevin's here. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Kevin Turvey here. Kevin Turvey, the man who really investigates everything properly. Not like Keith Marshall. And anyway, Keith Marshall, if I don't investigate things properly, then how come I'm on the BBC and you're not? <laughs> Think about that sometimes. And it wasn't me that nicked your bike. Anyway, just a bloke asked me to move it, that's all, so I moved it round the corner. I didn't nick it. Anyway, good evening, everybody else. Before we start, I thought I'd better apologise for my sore throat. And yesterday, I was investigating how many times you have to shout tumble dryer in the high street before somebody comes up and offers you a cigarette. <laughs> it took ages and ages. In the end, I lost count anyway. Anyway, this week, I decided I'd investigate tarmac. 
you know, like why it's black and things like that. <laughs> so I got up like really early on the first day of my investigation and thought I'd have a really good breakfast, you know, cereal. So I went into the kitchen, right, got out the cornflakes, put it on the table, went over to the fridge, like, because that's where I keep my milk, you know. <laughs> Opened up the door and guess what? There was no milk. <laughs> I thought, that's all right, I'll go to Tesco's and get some milk, like, because they got loads down there, you know. <laughs> no, they have, I've been there, I've seen it. <laughs> racks and racks of it. Anyway, I went down there. Went in, like, through the door, you know, because, like, they got two doors there, you know. <laughs> there's one that says, in, and there's one that says, out. And I went in the one that says, in. <laughs> went in there, and that's when this really strange thing happened. Because I saw this woman in there. Like, well, it's not odd in Tesco, is it? <laughs> but this one was. I thought, crikey, that's Noel Gordon. <laughs> I thought, can't be Noel Gordon, not in Tesco's, right? So I crept up behind her and tapped her on the shoulder and she turned round. Do you know what? I was right. It wasn't. <laughs> so I got the milk, like, and I took it home and poured it on me cornflakes, like, well, not all of it. <laughs> Just a bit, like, you know. Put the top back on and put it back in the fridge, like, on its own. Well, not absolutely on its own. There's a bit of cheese in there, I think. <laughs> Some ice, you know. But that's not important, anyway. Sat down to start me cornflakes, and I, I didn't know whether I wanted to listen to the radio or not. So I put on Radio 1, you know. <laughs> and I started eating me cornflakes, and I just had a few cornflakes about... 15 or 16 cornflakes. <laughs> I wasn't counting, you know. <laughs> well, you don't, do you? <laughs> well, I don't, anyway. I'd be stupid if I did, <laughs> Well, I just had a few cornflakes and there was this knock at the door. I thought, ah, that's someone at the door, right? So I got up, I went round the table and down to the end of the hall where I keep my front door. <laughs> and you know them little uh, holes, like, that you can look through and see everybody all big outside, you yeah? know? Well, I haven't got one of them. <laughs> so I opened the door, like, and it was the postman with a telegram. He says, Kevin Turbe, I've got a telegram for you. I said, oh, great. He says, I hope all your family's died in a really painful car accident. <laughs> I said, why? What have I ever done to you? And he smashed me in the face. So I got up, like, really quickly, grabbed the telegram and slammed the door, on. Right? Opened it up, not the door, like, you know, the telegram. <laughs> Stupid if I opened up the door again. <laughs> and I read it, and it said, Kevin Toovey, do not investigate tarmac. Investigate work. Love the BBC. So that was a lucky break, wasn't it? Could have spent the whole week investigating the wrong thing. <laughs> Till next week, Armchair Britain, don't forget, if there's anything you want investigating, Kevin's here. <laughs> You know what happened to me today? I was standing outside Tesco's, right, like looking after a dog for a mate, you know, just minding my own business, and this bloke came up and tried to put ten pence in the top of my head. <laughs> I said, what do you think you're doing? He says, you're not blind. He says, people like you make me sick. And he walked off over the car park, and I watched him all the time and he wasn't sick. He was a liar. <laughs> anyway, this week I've been investigating the media. It hasn't been much of an investigation. And it took me about four hours to look it up in the dictionary, that's all. Because it's quite near the back, you know, it's quite a long book, you know. And, and it's, all it means is, like, television and newspapers, that's all. So I didn't have anything to do for the rest of the week. I just didn't do anything. <laughs> well, did a few things, like, you know, walking about and... <laughs> going to into shops and out of shops again. <laughs> Basically, I didn't do anything. Then on Thursday, this really strange thing happened. Stranger than truth, except that it was true. <laughs> Strange. Anyway, I was watching Top of the Pops, right? Because I always like to catch Top of the Pops. Because, like, they have these charts of which pop groups have made the most money each week, you know, which is quite important for young people to know. <laughs> and I was watching it, there was this tap on the window. And I looked round, and it was the postman. I thought, that's weird. <laughs> not, because, not because it was, like, late, you know, at half past seven, but because we live on the third floor. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, he probably just wants to watch Top of the Pops or something, so I'll leave him alone, you know. Carried on watching Stake and Stephen, who's very good, and the little tap came again. 
So I looked round, I thought, it's no good, I'm going to have to find out what this is. So I walked over, I said, I'm just going to open the window, you know, and he sort of shook his head a bit. And I opened it up, and he'd gone. <laughs> I looked down, and he's in the greenhouse, doing a sort of wriggly dance on the floor. I thought, I'm going to have to find out about this. So I went outside, right? I didn't bother to put on my raincoat, because, like, well, I wasn't really thinking about it. And Anyway, it wasn't raining. So <laughs> that's not really important at all. Anyway... I went down I said, what's going on, Mr. Passman? And, like, he handed me this little note. So I took it and, like, read it, and it said, Dear Kevin Turvey, before you finish reading this note, you'll receive a severe blow on the back of your head with a hammer. Love the postman. P.S. Do you... Oh, and I thought, wow, ah, what's that? And it's whack on the back of my head. Whap, like that. And I thought, I better hold on, otherwise I'm going to lose my eyeballs. It came again like this. I didn't say anything about a third blow, did it? Whoa, but another one came. Whoa, I thought, what's going on here? I thought, I better get down in the hospital. So I started to crawl off, you know. I thought, I wouldn't call an ambulance, like, because it's only a short crawl. <laughs> crawl down the road, crawl around the corner, crawled up the flyover and down the other side, like, really fast. Going away, crawled up the steps to the hospital. Pretty nice in the hospital, like the bloke opened the door and I crawled in. Said, Sorry about your floor, mate. And I crawled over to like the desk, which is what they call the little hole that the nurse sticks her head through. She says, Are you national health or private? I says, National health, please. She says, Right, over there. So I went out into the car park where she was pointing, like, there's loads of other people sitting out there, right? And some of them were like lying there. Some of them sort of hanging, you know. It wasn't very nice. Anyway, I started to wait there. And then just at the end of the wait, this doctor came over with a hypodermic, syringe like, a needle, you know. And he says, Kevin Turvey. I says, Yeah. He says, Drop your trousers. <laughs> so I dropped my trousers. He says, Drop your pants. So I dropped my pants. I don't know why he didn't tell me to drop them both at the same time. <laughs> it saved a lot of time, really. But I suspect he didn't know that I was wearing any pants, you see. <laughs> Strange people, doctors, anyway. So he says, I'm going to give you an injection. And he was right. It went whack in the back of my head. Oh, what's this? And that's just when all these huge, great 30-foot slugs started appearing and coming towards me and saying, Kevin Turvey, give us your legs. We haven't got any, you bastard. <laughs> so it turned out to be quite a rough week, really. <laughs> anyway, that's the last time I watched Top of the Pops with the curtains open. <laughs> Till next week, viewers. Kevin here. <laughs> Good evening. Where's the cameras? What? Well, you might have told me you'd change the whole studio around. You know, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, and the same to you with bogeys wrapped round it. Uh, listen, good evening. My name's Kevin Turvey, and, uh, and I'm an investigative reporter and all that. But uh, and this week I've been investigating advice, right? Which is like another word for, uh, for help. Well, it's not really. Not if you're drowning, anyway. I mean, you don't swim there going, advice, advice! I mean, they just say, swim, you bloody! And then you drown, don't you? So it's no good. Well, unless you want to drown, anyway. But that's not important. The thing is, I haven't got time for my report, right? Because I just met this bloke outside in the bushes, right? And I was just doing some investigating into leaves, you know, how come they grow on trees and what they taste like when you smoke them and things like that. Anyway, and he says, psst, are you Richard Baker? I says, no, I'm Kevin Turvey. Which is like, true, you know. And he says, listen, can you give this... And he gave me this, right? He gave me this clock. He says, can you give this to Ian Trithowen? Which, yeah, Ian Trithowen, who's like the leader of the BBC. And he says, because uh, he's got to have it any minute now. I don't know why. I think it's the play school clock or something like that. I said, can't you give it to him? He says, no, I can't. I've got a headache, you see. So I said, well, look, I've got to do a report in a minute. He says, it's more important than that. Give it to him now. You've got two and a half minutes. And now I've only got a minute. So listen, I'll tell you a story, right? Um, once upon a time, there's this uh, fish, right, who uh, lives in the bushes by the BBC, and uh, he meets this um, prince who's called Kevin. And... Uh, I've just been handed this note. Right, and, they, and he marries the prince, and, uh, and they have lots of babies. And... and things packed in now. Work! Work, you bogey gobbler! Come on! It's not going to have to go to watchmenders. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave you with this little joke, right? Uh, what do you say to a man who's got no arms and no legs if your watch is broken? Have you got the time on your cock? <laughs> Do you know how much it costs to go to America? 96 quid, that's how much. But am I going to get that kind of money? I'm not, that's where. So I'm never, ever going to America. Ever. Anyway, good evening. My name's Kevin Turvey. And here's a good one. Why does Mrs Thatcher always wear barbed wire underwear? 
She doesn't. It's a joke. Uh, I thought, uh, you see, this week's subject is sex, which is slightly embarrassing. So that's why I thought I'd start with a bit of a joke, right? Well, not a bit of a joke, like a whole of a joke, bit of a joke, would be no good. No, they... <laughs> not unless it was the funny bit. Anyway, so this week I thought, how am I going to find out all about sex? And I thought, I oh, know. I'll become a prostitute. <laughs> so that's what I did. Right? I went out and bought myself a handbag. <laughs> well, it wasn't a real handbag, it was like a plastic bag. <laughs> but I stretched out the handle so it looked like a handbag. And put it on my shoulder and hung around outside Tesco's, right? <laughs> for about a day. <laughs> and then my first client came along. Uh, he was disguised as a policeman. I <laughs> uh, sidled up next to me, right? And he says, uh, excuse me, have you got the time? Which is like prostitute's code. <laughs> and I said, uh, about 16 quid. <laughs> and he said, you trying to be funny? <laughs> and I said, all right then, 10 quid. <laughs> and that's when he started punching me, right? <laughs> it was about... About the seventh or the eighth punch, I think. <laughs> Might have been the ninth. Anyway, it was about then I thought, he doesn't realise I'm a prostitute. <laughs> so I started to run, right? And I ran straight into Tesco's and tripped over this big bas basket they've got in there. And I thought, brilliant! Of course, a basket. That's what I should do. I'll invite Teresa Kelly over to supper and have sex with her afterwards. <laughs> really, because I've got all the things at home. I've got sausages and uh, potatoes, <laughs> gravy. Furniture. <laughs> I, loads, I've got loads of things at home. I mean, windows and all sorts of things. But it was just the food that I was thinking about at the time, right? And also, this friend of mine, right, Keith Marshall, well, he would be my friend, like, if I liked him, yeah. <laughs> he said that if you want to have sex with somebody, the thing to do, right, is to get some aphrodisiac, which is like this food that you eat that turns you into a sex maniac. <laughs> and apparently, the best kind you can get is powdered rhino's horn, right? Well, they don't sell it in Tesco's. <laughs> I don't think there's much call for it in Reddy Chew, though. So I thought, well, I know what I'll do. I'll get a file and I'll go up to the zoo and get some for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no good. I'll be there all afternoon. <laughs> then it might be quite dangerous anyway. I mean, what if the rhino didn't realise I was just powdering his nose for an aphrodisiac? You know? <laughs> I thought I was insulting him or something. I thought, no, no, I'll use soap powder. It's much the same. It comes from the same animal, doesn't it? <laughs> so that's what I did. I went home and, like, prepared everything, put it on the plates, cooked it, put it on the plates and laid out the table, put a candle in the middle of the table, didn't really need to light it because like we've got this strip lighting anyway in the kitchen so it's nice and bright in there anyway and i thought right everything's ready i better invite teresa kelly before the food goes cold so i went over to the phone and picked it up right dialed the number i won't actually like tell you what the number was because it's not important it'll just waste time if we start talking about telephone and she answered i got the number right and she said hello i said teresa kelly this is Kevin Turvey. Would you like to come over and have supper with me? We're, what we're having is potatoes and gravy and sausages with nothing on it at all. <laughs> and then have sex with me afterwards. <laughs> and she said, well, I'd like to, Kevin, but I've just been hit by a bus and I'll be in a coma until Wednesday. <laughs> it's always happening to her, that. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't find out anything about sex, I'm afraid. I can't really tell you. But I did find out that Eating aphrodisiacs makes you violently sick. <laughs> so anyway, until next week, viewers, don't forget, if there's anything you want investigating, Kevin's here. <laughs> I'll turn around when I'm ready, bogey face. <laughs> Good evening, I suppose. I thought I was supposed to have this week off. They said to me at the beginning of the week, this week, Kevin, it's relaxation and taking it easy. You know, general leisure. I thought, great, I spent the week in bed. Well, not the whole week, you know. I got up to go to the lavatory and <laughs> like to eat, you know. Well, you, you, you got to eat, you know, otherwise you can't go to the lavatory. <laughs> so I had a great week, you know. And I woke up this morning about 11 o'clock you know, because I've got this alarm clock, right? It's a, gra it's a great alarm clock. It's great. Because if you set it right, the little buzzer goes off, right? And then you stretch your arm up to turn it off and it pours boiling water all over your arm. <laughs> it's very 
refreshing. It's great. Great it works every time. So I was sitting up in bed, like changing the bandages on my arm this morning. And there was this hammering at the door. Like I thought, hello, someone's in a hurry. So I got out of bed, went to the lavatory, cleaned my teeth and combed my hair, <laughs> went and answered the door. And it was the black that runs this programme. He says, oh, there you are, Kevin. I says, where do you expect me to be? I live here. <laughs> he says, where have you been all week? I said, I've been taking it easy in bed, like you said. He said, you're not supposed to take it easy. You're supposed to investigate taking it easy. I said, well, thanks very much for telling me. <laughs> he said, listen, Turvey. I said, what do you think I'm doing, riding a bicycle? Which is quite clever, because, like, I wasn't doing it, you know. <laughs> he says, listen, Turvey, you go outside and investigate leisure right now. I said, what, in my pyjamas? And he'd already gone down the road, so I ran outside and said, what, in my pyjamas? And one of my neighbours said, I don't know, what's in your pyjamas? I said, shut up! <laughs> Up, you know. So I went inside right, and I thought, this is just impossible. I can't work and take leisure at the same time. I can't investigate taking it easy. Not unless I'm really relaxed when I'm investigating. So I thought, well, maybe that's a good idea. So I thought, I'll go out and get drunk. That's what I'll do. So I went down to the pub like, and got thrown out straight away. Apparently they don't serve people in pyjamas. <laughs> So I went round like, to this other pub, which was more liberal, right? I sat there for about an hour, two hours, you know, sitting down, taking it easy, waiting to get served. <laughs> Eventually, I thought, this is no good. I'll have to just ask for a drink or something. You know, I was getting worked up again. So I went like, over to the bar. I didn't have time to hang about. I said, give us a pint of Perno now. <laughs> he gave it me. I, I drunk it straight down, got up off the floor and went outside. <laughs> Getting a bit woozy, I thought, I'd better start investigating pretty quick. What shall I investigate first? I don't know, I'll investigate going to sleep in the park. So I went down there, kind of ziggy-zaggy, went down there, and went and lay down in the long grass, you know. Like, not, not by the swings, because that was making me a bit dizzy when I looked at it. I lay down, put a newspaper over my face, and lay down and went to sleep in the long grass. And that's when I had this really terrible dream. I dreamt that I was flying upside down over Turkey, drinking Perno, and all the people were pointing at me and saying, Give us a banana, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up with this stabbing pain in the front of my head. And I thought, I'm only drinking Perno in halves from now on. <laughs> and then the pain started moving around in my head. And, and, and I opened my eyes and pulled the newspaper back, and there was this spike sticking out of my head <laughs> with this park keeper on the end of it. And he says, what are you doing going to sleep underneath the litter, you vagrant? I said, I'm not a vagrant, I'm an investigative reporter. He says, if you're an investigative reporter, how come you're covered in sick? And that was someone who come up and been sick all over me while I was asleep. So this is what I learned about leisure, Mr. Producer. <laughs> Good evening, Britain. Tonight, I'd like to talk about shark fishing. <laughs> but I don't know the first thing about it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to talk about something else, I think. And anyway, the BBC have asked me to talk about sex again. <laughs> so, <clears throat> sex, that's my topic for this week. And as you can see, uh, Kevin Turvey. <laughs> yeah, but apart from that, what you can see as well is that I've been doing a lot of research into this problem. I've been uh, to the swimming pool. I've been to the dirty bookshop. I've been to the Undertakers. That was a bit of a miscalculation, really. <laughs> well, the Undertakers is, like, next door to the dirty bookshop, you know. And I wasn't concentrating very hard at the time. <laughs> no, but they were very helpful in there, you know. I went in, I said, Good afternoon, my name's Kevin Turvey, and I'm mainly interested in sex. <laughs> and they gave me a few hints, like, you know. They weren't hints about sex, really, so much as hints about banging your head on a coffin and getting thrown through a window by Undertakers. <laughs> okay, you know, but it wasn't really what I was investigating this week, you know. And I had to waste quite a lot of time looking for a chemist to buy some bandages, you know. Do you know how much bandages cost? Yeah, nor do I. Well, the chemists were closed. It took me three hours to find that out. What a waste of time. And you know me, well, you don't, well, I know me anyway, but if you're someone like me, right, then time is money, as they say. Although I don't quite know who they are, they'd say. They're <laughs> probably clockmakers, I suppose, and bank managers. Certainly ain't bank robbers. You don't get a bank robber going into the bank and saying, All right, mate, give us the time. <laughs> hey, come on, give us the time and no funny business. Are you flicking the bees at me? 
Look, these ain't the V's, this is a gun. All right. Well, they look like the V's to me, mate. <laughs> look, just hand over the money, all right? Stick it all in this bag, all right? And no monkey business. What, you mean like going, eh, eh, I'm a monkey? Yeah, that's the kind of thing. Now, are you going to cooperate, or do I have to start getting strange? <laughs> no, I ain't going to cooperate. Not until you prove that that's a gun. Go on, fire a bullet with your V's, mate. <laughs> Listen, mate, I'm a dangerous criminal, and I ain't got much time. <laughs> All right, then, so fire a bullet, scarf, eh? <laughs> this isn't a scarf, it's a beard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look, just stop wasting time, mate. All right, and fire a bullet with your V's or get out of it. All right. Right, I will. Bang! What do you think about that, mate? What do I think about what? What do I think about you going bang while your fingers is waggling? <laughs> I think it's pathetic. That's what I think about it, basically. Get yourself a real gun. All right, then I will. Martin, give us a gun, will you? Huh? Right, mate, what do you think about that? Stick them up. All of them. Blimey, OK, mate. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, you stick them up. <laughs> no, I said it first. You stick them up, you twat. No, you stick them up. I've got a gun, mate. Listen, I... Well, I think you get the basic point, anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Sorry, like, uh, was you talking to him? <laughs> oh, you wasn't? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, I think that's about all the time we've got for you this week. <laughs> Golly, is that the time? <laughs> so, uh, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to leave you there, you know. I mean, all great things have to come to an end, don't they? I mean, look at the M6, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, don't look at it now, you know, but when you're up there, have a look at it, cos it's a great road. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it's at times like this, I'll always remember what Teresa Kelly once said to me. She said, why don't you sod off, Kevin Turvey? <laughs> and, you know, I think I know what she meant. So until next week, this is Kevin Turvey saying, do up your trousers, keep your shoes clean, and don't tell anyone you saw this programme, all right? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, actually, but I'm actually very depressed. Don't ask me why. I'm just a strange and interesting person, I suppose. A bit like Anita Harris. <laughs> Only without the bullet hole, you know. <laughs> so, if you don't mind, I'd just like to sit here, you know, and not say anything. At all. <laughs> Except that... No, I'm not going to say it now. Well, I'll just say that one thing. I'm more depressed now than I ever have been in all my life, ever. Except for the day that my mate Dave got killed. <laughs> Dave the tortoise. <laughs> well, you can laugh. He was like a pet to me. <laughs> well, he was a rat, really. But, but I sellotaped a plate to his back because the council said that you can't keep vermin round our flats. I said, well, what are you doing giving a flat to Keith Marshall, then? <laughs> yeah, well, they couldn't say anything to that, you know. Cos, like, I was alone in the bathroom when I said it. <laughs> no, but I adopted Dave, you know, cos he was all alone in the world. He had no friends, no relatives, no family. Basically, cos, like, he'd eaten them all. You know. <laughs> but we lived together for three years. Yeah, I mean, separate bedrooms and everything, you know. <laughs> Until one day there was a knock at the door, and so I answered it like, and uh, it was the milkman, and I paid him, and uh, he went away, and I closed the door again and came back inside, and... I mean, that's got nothing to do with the story, right? But, <laughs> No, I just wanted to make it clear that I'm the kind of person who pays his debts. <laughs> so if you see that vulture from the corner shop, tell him that it's all right, I'm going to pay up, it's all right. But he's not really a vulture, you know, he's... Well, he comes from Leeds. <laughs> we just call him a vulture. But he's got a beak and two wings and he hangs around on buffaloes, you know. <laughs> anyway, as luck would have it, bad luck mainly, one day Dave got killed by a laundrette. <laughs> yes, my laundrette. But you see, I used to keep him in the drawer in the kitchen where I keep all my dirty socks, right? Yeah, well, he liked the atmosphere in there, you know. <laughs> well, he was in there one day having a bit of a sniff, you know, when it happened. 
well, about 20 minutes before it happened, actually, because, well, it takes me 20 minutes to walk down the laundrette with a bag of washing, you know. But anyway, to cut a long story short, the end. <laughs> uh, no, that's cutting it a bit too short, I think. Uh, to cut a very short story a little bit longer, uh, you know how when you're an animal and you accidentally get put in a washing machine with a load of dirty washing, and the washing machine fills up with water so you can't breathe, and you want to breathe, then you drown. Any chemist will tell you, you know. Well, that's what happened to Dave. Because, like, the cycle lasted half an hour. And apparently he couldn't hold his breath that long. <laughs> or if he could, well, he just forgot how to, you know. Anyway, you've got to be philosophical about these things, haven't you? That's why I've decided to kill myself. <laughs> now, this is it. Goodbye, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gone dark. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I'm still dying. <laughs> I'm still alive. Of the bags round here. <laughs> yes, well, it's very embarrassing. I'm trying to kill myself. <laughs> I don't care if there's nobody watching. It's still embarrassing for me. <laughs> yes, it would make a difference if I was dead. I'd be hanging around on clouds with. Oh, forget it, forget it. It's a waste of time. Forget it. It's cancelled. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but apparently I'm not going to be able to kill myself this evening. <laughs> and I hope that hasn't impaired your enjoyment of the program. <laughs> So until next week, this is Kevin Turvey saying goodbye. <laughs> well, except... <laughs> I just want to say, don't bother trying to go and see me in Superman 3. Because I'm not in it. <laughs> Guess what happened to me today? You never will. Not in a million years. So I suppose I'll have to talk about something else. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll tell you anyway. I had the wrong newspaper delivered. It was this morning. See, normally, I get smash hits, right? But today... I do, I've been there. <laughs> today, they sent me the record mirror. It's amazing the things that happen, isn't it? <laughs> I expect the next thing to happen be, to be something like... They'll give me a bottle of Vimto instead of a bottle of milk or something like that. <laughs> really crackers like that. Tell you what. That'd make your cornflakes taste a bit, uh, vimto-y, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, uh, unless you was having cocoa pops or something like that, yeah. <laughs> Boiled eggs. <laughs> well, your boiled eggs ain't much like cocoa pops, aren't they? <laughs> well, they're rounder, really, and more eggy-like, you know. <laughs> and you don't get chickens out of cocoa pops. <laughs> well, not unless you're hallucinating or something like that. <laughs> anyway, it's never happened to me. About the nearest thing to it that has happened, right, is that I once met a bloke who claimed to be a milkman. But that's not much like it at all, really. <laughs> uh, he could have been lying anyway. <laughs> but people do. I mean, like, I had my legs amputated yesterday. <laughs> and that's a lie. <laughs> it's quite a good lie, actually. <laughs> Probably made quite a lot of money with that lie. I could do with quite a lot of money. But I spent all mine on an ice cream, you see. See, because, like, about half an hour ago, before this, I was hanging around, cos I had about half an hour to kill, right? And I thought, I can either go up to the bar and get a few drinks down me, you know. But I thought, no, nah, I'm always doing that, you know, and it takes ages to get me anorak dry again. And it's just a waste of time, really. Uh, besides which, I'm trying to avoid the Redditch sunrises, you know. That's this drink I've invented. It's a cocktail, actually. It's very sophisticated and very easy to make. It's, um, a bottle of Tia Maria, which you pour into a pint glass, right? And mix in an ice cube to taste. <laughs> well, to taste to your Maria, basically. <laughs> You've got to watch it. I had three of them last Wednesday. I, I ended up having eaten an entire tablecloth. <laughs> I woke up in the morning inside the fridge. <laughs> I've written a complete novel on the inside of the ice box. <laughs> it's a very good novel, actually, but I had to defrost the fridge to get my finger back, you know, and <laughs> bang went the novel. <laughs> Well, drip, drip went the novel, actually, yeah. <laughs> so I thought, no, I'll steer clear of it. I'll have an ice cream instead. That'll kill half an hour. 
So I went up to the woman, right? I said, I'll have an ice cream, please. And she said, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, I'll have an ice cream, please. <laughs> she said, well, you probably better go up the canteen then. I said, what do you mean? She said, this is the lady's lavatory. <laughs> right. So I said, oh, right, OK, then, right. And I went up to the canteen. I went up to the woman there. It was a different woman, you know. Well, it could have been the same woman. <laughs> she would have had to run very fast up the corridor <laughs> and do some pretty snappy plastic surgery, you know. <laughs> I don't think she can have done that, you know. Well, I would have noticed the surgeons coming out, you know. <laughs> oh, no, I think it was a completely new woman. <laughs> well, she was about 45, but you know what I mean, anyway. Get them rhinos out of here! <laughs> Pesky things! <laughs> I can't remember what I was saying now. Uh, ah, I'm losing the atmosphere. Um, uh, knock, knock. Ah, yeah. oh, you've heard it. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, this week I've been investigating them nasty little sticky things that you stick things to walls with, right? And what I've discovered is, if you eat a whole packet of them, it sticks your teeth together for four days. <laughs> so my tip of the week is, if you're going to eat a whole packet of them things before a conversation and it'll stick your teeth together for four days, then that's a really bad idea. <laughs> All right, so until next week, this is Kevin Turvey, you know, just sitting here in this chair. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> this is Kevin Turvey. There's something different about me this week, isn't there? <laughs> Can you spot it? <laughs> I've had a haircut. <laughs> no, that's not it, is it? What can it be, then? That's right. I'm not here. <laughs> I have completely disappeared and become utterly invisible. I'm floating around in the air and like in and out of cupboards. <laughs> but I'm now visible again. Uh, uh, and I'm not floating around anymore. Good, I was getting a bit airsick anyway. <laughs> an investigation into the nature of the supernatural. <laughs> and as you probably spotted, it was completely great. <laughs> My name is Kevin Turvey. Why? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's not my fault. Somebody gave it to me. I wasn't consulted. I think they might have asked me, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I'm the one who's got to go around the rest of his life being called Kevin Turvey by people. <laughs> Makes you sick. Makes me sick anyway. <laughs> I tell you what makes me really sick though. <laughs> Drinking a pint of salt water and jamming my fingers down the throat. <laughs> uh, that makes me really sick, that does. <laughs> so like wherever possible, I try to avoid doing that, you know. <laughs> well, especially on the television. <laughs> Cos like it gets down the back and makes the picture go all wiggly, you know. <laughs> and all the programmes start to stink. <laughs> Even fame. <laughs> And then you get this horrible stinging pain in the back of your head. And you go, ow, stop eating me, Mum. <laughs> and she says, what's all this sick? <laughs> you say, well, it's mainly vegetables. <laughs> but there's some cornflakes in there, I think, and a cup of tea and things like that, you know. <laughs> anyway, it's a whole, it's a horrible business. I just try to avoid it whenever possible being sick, you know. Especially in the fridge. <laughs> well, because things last longer in the fridge, don't they? <laughs> Cos, like, we've got this fridge at home, you know. Well, we mainly use it for keeping things in that we want to keep cold, you know. <laughs> well, it ain't much good for anything else, really. I mean, you, you can't get Radio 1 on it. <laughs> well, not unless you put the radio inside it first, you know. I tried that the other day, actually. But I just opened the fridge door, right, and I heard this terrible ringing sound. And I thought, oh, no. I've smashed my face open on the fridge door again. <laughs> But I hadn't, cos, like, the ringing carried on and on and it turned into a thumping and his voice saying, Let me in, Turvey! Open up the door! And I thought, oh, no, not the front door again. And I was right, cos, like, it was the back door, yeah. <laughs> so I changed what I was thinking a bit 
And I thought, oh, no, not the back door again. So I got up, right, went out into the hall, because, well, you've got to get out into the hall to get to the back door, you see. <laughs> well, now, the only alternative is, like, smashing down the wall next to the cooker. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved in all that again, right? Anyway, I got to the back door, right, opened it up and everything. That was easy, really. It's... Well, I'd done it loads of times before, you know. <laughs> Just got to twist the handle a bit and open up the door, you know. Piece of piss, really. <laughs> Well, it's made out of wood, you know, but... <laughs> you know what I mean, really. Anyway, I got outside, and guess what? There was absolutely nobody there. Well, except me and uh, you know, some paving stones and a fly or two. But there was nobody else. And I thought, hello. I didn't say it, like, you know, I just thought, hello. Well, there's not much point saying it, cos, like, there wasn't anybody else there, you know. But I'll tell you something funny, right? There's this bloke and he goes into a pub and there's a donkey behind the bar. And he goes up to the donkey and he says, All right, Brian? <laughs> but, well, he guessed his name, you know. <clears throat> and uh, the donkey says, All right, mate? Well, only with his hoof, like he gets All right, mate. <laughs> And the bloke says, I'll have a pint of bitter, please. And the donkey says, Right, mate. Pause it out. He says, Pint of bitter, was it? And the bloke says, That's right. And he goes, Here you are then. <laughs> I told you it was funny, didn't I? <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with the story, though. But... <laughs> That's the way things are sometimes, isn't it? You know. <laughs> well, that just about wraps it up for another week. Before I go, I'd just like to say, um, I'm going now. Ta da. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> so, until next week, this is Kevin Turvey saying keep your trousers up, keep your legs down, and this is the age of the train. <laughs>